Let's talk about the total solar eclipse in Maine, especially that's going to be happening in April, April 8th to be exact. 4 8 24 and that's when it looks going to look like only for the total solar eclipse not for the partial one that's going to be happening just south of the path of totality so we'll talk about that now in the anatomy of a solar eclipse get into the science just a little bit get a little geeky here and we'll break it down there is the sun and then here we go as we fly around and show what's going on out astronomy wise let's talk about it so there's the sun and then you have the moon that is going to block that sunlight. So some of us will be in that partial shadow. That's called the penumbra. Let's think about partial eclipse. And then it's the umbra. For the total solar eclipse, it is the path of totality. It is the umbra, the full shadow. Once again, the moon obviously blocking that sunlight in totality as it gets here to Earth and to Maine, especially for our look at things here. First, before we get into all that stuff, let's talk about Safe solar viewing tips, very important. Got to keep the eyes 100% healthy. You do not want to look directly at the sun. Sunglasses do not provide sufficient protection and only look at the sun through an approved solar filter. Now, it's even safer to observe this indirectly by projecting the sun's image with a pinhole or binoculars. So you can find all that safety information on our website, newcentermain.com. Let's talk about 2024, the last one, 2017, and that went through South Carolina. This one, a different path, April 8th, and the percentage of the sun that's going to be eclipsed. So for us here in Maine, and really if you're looking at the whole country, but for us, the path of totality is just this thin layer right here. Okay, and that's going to go through western Maine and northern Maine. Outside of that, you're more around Portland, for example, 90, 95% eclipsed. So I want to talk about the totality because that's the main event. I'll pick out a spot here like Rangeley, which is really the first area that's going to see the eclipse. And as we get it to 100%, it is going to be at 330. So you go from partial to maximum. And then there we go at 439. The partial eclipse is going to end. Another spot. This is second on the list here of spots I picked out. There is maximum eclipse. Obviously, you have the shadow. 439 is when it's going to end the partial eclipse. See, they're gone. Okay. Another spot, Dover Foxcroft. Starting off 220 is the partial, and then we go to maximum at 332, 440 for the partial eclipse ending. So these are times that are very important, pretty much exact if you're in these locations. And then the main event, last stop in Maine is Holton. 100% max is going to be 333. It's over at 441. And I'm going to really dive into the details here about what that all means here as far as what you're going to see during those eclipses. But first, here it is. Entering from Texas. This is the eclipse. Dallas, Fort Worth, Texarkana, Hot Springs, Little Rock, Arkansas. And this is Central Time. It's eventually going to go over to Eastern Standard Time. Obviously around Indianapolis, Cleveland, over towards the Great Lakes, Lake Ontario, and then we're in western New York, upstate New York, and then eventually here, I'll stop it at Maine at 332, give or take, where a good chunk of Maine, not all of Maine, is in that path totality. So from Clayton Lake all the way towards Millinocket, Lincoln, and then Halton will be right after that, just around 330 or so, gets into New Brunswick, just past the 330 hour. Now, if you're not in the path totality, you won't get the main event. But what you will get is a partial solar eclipse in Kittery, in Lewis and Auburn, in Bangor, and in Eastport at 334. So you're not going to miss out on everything. You'll still get some stuff. But I want to focus on Holton, Maine, because that really is going to be the last stop for the eclipse in the U.S. So there's something called first contact. That's the moment the edge of the moon touches the edge of the sun. That's at 222 in the afternoon. And then this is called the moon bites the sun. It looks like that, right? When you see the eclipse happening, the eclipse starts to become visible at 223 in the afternoon. And then here we go. Now that the shadow is blocking things out, okay, solar energy is going to decrease around 250, meaning the temperature is going to start to go down because we no longer have our heating source. Obviously, the sun heats the ground. The ground gives off that heat. So this is phase two now. Darkness intensifies. The eclipse is going to start progressing at 3.04. You're getting close to that 3.30 time now. This is my pick of the entire thing here is where nature starts to stir. 
Behavior of animals and plants changed at 325. For example, bees are going to go back into the nest, right? Um, all kinds of things are going to start to happen. I hope to do another whole video on this nature part because I think it's really cool uh, to see how nature reacts when you have complete darkness in the afternoon. Now, in the corona at 331, the outer part of the sun's atmosphere will begin to appear, and that's the cool stuff here. The diamond ring here, courtesy of NASA. That's this right here, okay? As we're getting really close to that totality. Let's talk about this in more detail, the diamond ring. The corona forms a ring around the dark moon. The sun dazzles like a jewel, and it's a jewel in the sky. Let me just back up and show you that again. Look at that. Look at that jewel. It's just amazing, right? And that's what's going to happen with Path of Totality right up in Holton, say, a jewel in the sky. Now, let's fast forward just a little bit to Bailey's beads here. You see this happening? Those are Bailey's beads, right? That's really cool, okay? So we go from the jewel in the sky to now you're getting real close to totality and you've got Bailey's beads happening just right there really cool unique this is you have to be once again a clear sky and totality bailey's beads happens just before totality i mean it's the last thing to happen you get beams of the sunlight streaming through the valleys on the moon is seen on the edge of the moon let's go back and look at that one more time those are the beams of the sunlight i'm getting all excited talking about this because if we have a clear sky and this happens that is game on for us here in holton maine so just get ready for that. That is a big highlight if we can get everything to line up. Clear sky, Bailey's beads, and then we go into chromosphere right here. Look at the red starting to happen here. This is right around totality, okay, like seconds away. It's, it's that good. And the chromosphere is a thin red layer of the sun's atmosphere. It becomes briefly visible in totality. So you're at totality. It's happening. It's that last like split second before you go completely dark. And then you get the reddish tongue like prominences start to poke out. Have you seen those pictures on the Internet? It looks like the red kind of dancing around the moon. That's what you're going to get. OK, and then here it is. Totality, the main event. Got the Corona going on, the brightness, and it's just crystal clear, perfect, if the sky is clear. Now, the radiant diamond was what happens moments before and after totality. It is a single point of sunlight that shines through a valley on the moon, and the sun's corona is going to create a brilliant, brilliant halo, a ring of light around the moon. You want to see what that looks like? Of course you do, right? Let's take a look at radiant diamond. This is special here. Before and after totality. Look at that right there just magical and you will see that once again in totality if you're in Holton if you're in Jackman if you're in Rangeley and the sky is clear now we go into totality ending here we're not done though the edge of the moon exposes the sun this is called third contact we had first contact now we're at third contact at 335 now in Holton your glasses need to be on before this because now you're starting to get sunlight again and you could really damage those eyes here. So now things kind of flip here. So here's the chromosphere showing back up on the other side, right? And then Bailey's beads show back up here on the other side, okay? So we're starting to repeat things. We're going backwards now as the, obviously the shadow is changing, okay? Where the shadow is gonna start to move. There's the diamond ring showing back up. And then here we go. So now we're starting to go into the other phases. We're going backwards kind of. Nature returns to normal in Holton at 342. The bees start coming back out, okay? At 355, the light levels start to return to normal. Temperature starts to go back up. And then at 441, it's over. Partial eclipse ending, and you're done in Holton and just out of here. So I got to talk about the forecast, right? That's what we do. And the cloudy day chances. Now, even with this potentially bad of a cloudy day forecast, which is 79% of the time since 2000 has been pretty much overcast in Rangeley, even that bad, you're still going to get things like nature stirring, even if it is cloudy, okay? So this is still going to be a very big deal, regardless of the cloud cover. Obviously, with a clear sky, it would be even better. 
The last total solar eclipse in the U.S. was August 21st, 2017. I was there in South Carolina. It was phenomenal. It's the first time in 99 years and it swept across 14 states. The next solar eclipse talked about at the top here, April 8th, 2024. We will have to wait until 2044 for the next one in the U.S. That's how long it's going to be. It'll be worth the wait as we'll see here. Uh, more on the eclipse coming up as we get closer to April 8th.